Hello everyone, my name is uh, pierre hugues Charbonneau, I'm an IT architect and uh, today's uh, basically tutorial will be uh, we're providing a, an introduction to the uh, popular uh, free tool uh, Java Visual VM. Uh, now this is the first uh, video of a series uh, which will provide you with uh, several step-by-step -step, uh, tutorials uh, and basically to see how it can be leveraged in your day-to-day -day, uh, operation could be a support role or development role you'll see it's a, it's a key tool to you especially if you're not using any uh, commercial products um, to monitor your ap application so if we start quickly what is uh, Java Visual VM it's essentially a tool which is uh, prepackaged uh, with the Java JDK since uh, quite a few years now uh, the tools has evolved uh, there's multiple plugin available to the tool but essentially it's uh, it's available out of the box from the JDK so let's start with the location of the tool so basically um, today uh, we're going the example of GDK 1.8 which was recently released this year uh, back in March and April uh, so what you can see from my disk uh, which as you can see is Windows base um, is the GDK installation folder so in this case we use GDK 1.8.0 so this is the root directory uh, obviously GDK has uh, definitely a uh, GRE folder and under the BIN folder get all the executables which include the java.exe right basically when you run your program well if you scroll down you will notice JVisual VM is actually part of the GDK so it's it's a free tool as I mentioned it's already part of GDK uh, so if you're using uh, Windows based OS you can simply double click on it and then this is going to launch the window in our case we created uh, shortcuts to it right so that's what I would recommend obviously depending of your role you may want to create some quick shortcut to Visual VM they're 32 bit 64 bit uh, and and after you start it you will see the screen so as, as I said you double click on it and then so the main screen will show up now the tool is not going to do anything if you don't have any program so part of this introductions um, what we did is that we, we created a, a very simple Java program just to create some noise initiate of a create a Java process uh, in this case it's a program to simulate uh, some uh, memory leak so I'm going to start the program now and then you will see Java Visual VM that we just started is able to automatically detect my new Java program which is running on this PID right so again Visual VM goal is truly to monitor your Java application so your Java application when you're firing it the Java process as we just started so in this case Java VM is able to detect uh, so the first thing you can do double check on the job program it did detect and now you will see a basic function of it so you get the name of the program uh, in our case it's called class metadata leak simulator get the PID the host the main class and then you get detail also on the Java VM in this case 64-bit uh, GVM that's a program that we're running on uh, and a different version of the GRE and so on so you get a bit of the overview of the of your process now keep in mind this is a, a Java local program but for example if you're you, monitoring your uh, let's say a production environments you will see basically specification on your product environment from the screen and then from from this you can see uh, different tabs by default that are showing up well, the main tab is the monitor so the monitor tab is very useful um, as I said today we won't go too deep into the analysis part I'm just going to show you an overview and I'll get back with a with a part two and a on a deeper dive uh, and troubleshooting techniques but essentially from the mon monitor page you get the CPU monitor utilization with correlation of the garbage collection activity which we will discuss later uh, you get the Java heap monitoring very crucial including the meta space now you may wonder what metaspace means well keep in mind the uh, we're using Java 8 
case uh, you have seen my article uh, before uh, that hotspot JVM uh, perm gen has now been replaced by Metaspace since uh, Java 1.8. That's why you see this here. And we're able to monitor the Metaspace, which is the class metadata. Right? Now you get the loaded classes. Now keep in mind this is going up because that's what our program is doing, right? It's simulating a leak, so that's why we want to show you some noise so we can see uh, J Visual VM uh, in action. And you get a detail about the, the, the actual thread. So you see this is truly a monitor screen. You can filter, you can remove if you want, add, remove. You can perform a garbage collection on the fly. You could, uh, you may want to generate a heap dump as well. You see if you click on perform GC, you will see it's triggering a garbage collection. The other time is to monitor the threads of your Java process. So we'll see that in more detail. Get the sampler, which we'll cover in a separate session. This is uh, essentially profiling activities that you can do. You can profile your program for CPU bottlenecks, memory, uh, and so on. And you get also profiler as well. So you see that Java Visual M is quite complete tool, giving you uh, monitoring capabilities, thread view, uh, sampling, deep dive thread, CPU issues, uh, and you can even add plugin to it, uh, which I will show you next uh, in, a, in another tutorial where you could add some uh, uh, MBN details as well. So there's some plugin available uh, that we'll cover next um, in future session. Very useful uh, pl plugin. Now that being said, if you right click. Um, you'll see you can do all of this on the box, right? In the application snapshot, I want to save a specific snapshot Let's see, for analysis purposes. You can generate a heap dump, thread dump on the fly. Very useful for troubleshooting. Each of them will be covered separately through uh, separate videos. Uh, so right now it's just an overview. So as you can see, a lot of capabilities. Uh, if you have not use it yet to monitor your application. I highly recommend that you use it if it's possible. Uh, I'll cover later some techniques. Now in this case, keep in mind, we're using the auto detect function. So because we're running on Windows, uh, JVM is able to detect it automatically, but you can use JVM remotely as well. We'll cover it in a separate session. Let's see, you would like to configure it to remotely attach uh, to a, a production environment, assuming from a network perspective and security that will be allowed in your organization, that you will be able to do that as as well. Okay, so that was pretty much uh, our initial uh, overview. Um, so I hope you enjoyed this uh, quick tutorial on how to, uh, which was just a quick introduction to the Java Visual, Visual VM tool. Now for the next sessions. Um, we'll be doing some deep, deeper dive on some of the monitoring capabilities, including the thread monitoring and how you can use the, the thread done for that purpose. All right. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and uh, have a good day.